hello. Today we are doing my best and worst series of the year tag. I have done this for the last two or three years. This is a video I enjoy doing because I feel like it gives me a chance to make sure that I am giving series experiences as a whole their due credit for my best and worst of the year genre of video. It's easy to get caught up in a single entry and kind of forget the totality of an experience you might be having with a series. Now, I will say that I don't think this year was as strong of a series reading experience for me. In the last couple of years, I've had kind of like big series reading projects that were going really well. And this year I had one series reading project that went really badly and one rereading project that did go very well, but like, I don't know. I just feel like this year for series was a little not my strongest, but there are definitely things that I wanna talk about as highs and lows when it comes to that. And uh, I think that this will be an interesting discussion. We'll see how it goes. But first, let's take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Book of the Month Club. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I am a fan and user of Book of the Month Club, a very popular and fast-growing book service for readers whose mission is to promote new and emerging authors and to help readers find books that they are going to absolutely love. Every month, their team culls hundreds of upcoming releases and readers are given a selection of five curated titles for new and early releases. You guys know that I am an omnivore. I read pretty much every genre and Book of the Month Club is great at having options in pretty much every genre. We've got literary fiction, fantasy, sci-fi, romance, mystery, thriller, nonfiction. They have a very good spread, but if none of those books that month catch your fancy, no problem. Just skip for that month, no must, no fuss and take a look at the next month's selection. They have a really competitive price point, I think for newly released hardcover fiction. We are doing end of the year lists and you will see a few Book of the Month Club picks on my end of the year lists. And this month's titles are A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham, The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox, The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green, A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw, Olga Dies Dreaming by Sochil Gonzalez, and Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. I already read A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham, and I can tell you that this was a super well-written thriller. This is a serial killer coming back to strike again kind of a book, and I think the writing in particular was super nice, especially for a debut. I'm also very intrigued by this one from John Green because this is an essay collection from him, and while his fiction plots haven't intrigued me to this point, his actual writing is super nice, so I'm very intrigued to try some nonfiction from him. And something else that's very exciting is that in the month of December. Book of the Month is running a special deal where you can get your first book for only $5 if you use the code JOLLY. So, I mean, now is the time, guys. I think this is the time to strike. Use the code JOLLY for your first book to be only $5. So if you're interested in giving Book of the Month a try, use this code and the link down below in the description. And thank you once again to Book of the Month for kindly sponsoring today's video. So without further ado, let's get into the questions. The first question is, what is the best series that you caught up with this year that is still a work in progress. And I am going to go with P. DeJelly Clark's Fatma El Sha'arawi series. I guess that's what it's called. The first book in the series, or the first story, I guess, in the series was called A Dead Gen in Cairo. Then there was The Haunting of Tramcar 015. And then this is the latest release that came out this year called A Master of Gen. And I really enjoy this as a lovely blend of mystery, speculativeness, and a romantic element, which tends to be the things that I love the best in books. So this is really kind of like a Mara pleaser kind of series. And while there's only three stories that we have gotten so far in this series, I am very much hoping or expecting that it's going to continue the way that this one ended definitely opens the door for that. And we've gotten three books so far. So hopefully we will get even more. The next question is what is the best work in progress series that you are still catching up with? And actually, I just realized that one of my answers is not right. I was gonna say the realm of the elder but I actually am still catching up with it, but it is finished. So I need to come up with a different answer. Well, every answer that I'm thinking of, either the series is finished, 
and I'm still catching up with it, or the series is not finished, but I have caught up with it. I mean, I guess just to shout out my favorite reread <laughs> series this year was definitely Side Changeling because I am doing a podcast on that. I, this is still a series that's in progress, but I have read all of them. So I guess this year I don't really have a good answer for this one. I will make up for it by allowing myself to have three answers to the next question, which is what is your favorite first book in a series that you read this year? I guess in order of enjoyment, I would say Dead Dead Girls by, I forget the author's first name, but her last name is Afia. This is the first in a historical mystery series that is set in 1920s Harlem. It looks cozy-ish from the cover, but it is not cozy. It is like pretty full on mystery thriller, but it is historical. And I thought that it was a really strong debut and a great first entry in that series. Similarly, I would say Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. This is the first in a middle grade fantasy series. Also a debut, also very strong. I think you can tell in both of those pace. Actually, yeah, for both of those, the issue I had in them was somewhat how the story was paced or how sort of the plot was unfolded a little bit. I thought it was, you could basically just tell a little bit that it was a debut, but in both cases, the writing is very strong. The character work is really interesting and the overall like story setup is great. So yeah, I would say Amari and the Knight Brothers, similarly, very good first book in a series, also a very strong debut. And then my favorite first book in a series, or I guess a duology is The Fixer by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is one of my all time favorite kind of like political thriller YA books I've ever read. And again, I. I really liked the way that the mystery worked in this and the characters I thought were particularly great. Okay, next, what first book in a series did you read that once you finished reading it, you thought this should have just been a standalone? And I actually didn't have an answer to this one until like two days ago, because I think unpopularly, I'm going to say that I think The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, while I can see why people would want this to be a series, because the characters are very endearing. It's a warm hug of a book. I guess I would say it falls in that vibe of cozy speculativeness. So I totally get why people would want more in this, but I actually think that this would be better if it was just a standalone story. And that's how I'm going to choose to enjoy to read it. I'm trying to think why I feel that way. I guess while I can see that there would be room for there to be more adventures. I kind of feel like the way this ends lends itself well to just being a conclusive ending to a story. So that I think is how I'm going to enjoy it. But it was very good. I see why people would want more. But for me, for whatever reason, I got to it and was like, no, I don't. I don't think I want to keep reading in this series. Not because it wasn't good, but like this was what I wanted from the story. And I'm done now with this. Okay, next. What is your most overhyped series of the year? So I'm going to I have four answers to this because like I said, I feel like my series reading this year was not as strong as it has possibly been in past years. So I know which one is like my definitive number one answer, but I have three runner ups. I'm going to say the, the one I liked the least, but I'm going to say was the least disappointing because I do think it's still a classic. It just didn't work for me is the book of the new sun from Gene Wolfe. This is a science fantasy classic series that sort of established or helped establish the subgenre of science fantasy. So like I appreciate appreciate what it did for the genre, but the actual story I hated and should have DNF'd. I didn't because it was a book club and I should have just DNF'd it. But there's that one. I'm going to put that as my least disappointing just because it is a class. You see what I'm saying? Then I'm going to say Neon Gods by Katie Roberts. This is the first in the Dark Olympus, I think is the series title. This was massively hyped up to me on Book Talk in particular, but generally this was a big romance title this year. I think that this, it disappointed me because of how hyped it was. I think if this had been half the length, this would have been great as a full book. I just don't think there was enough plot or character development happening, but like it's steamy if that's what you're looking for. And uh, yeah, this disappointed me, but I could see why other people would enjoy it. I just, it was overhyped for me. My runner up for most disappointing, I'm going to say is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. And this is just because of how hyped it was and how bummed I am that I didn't get on with it. it I feel like this is a book that I, I DNF because I had no, I feel like the character development in this was like almost non-existent. And once the only character that I had any kind of connection with died at about the like 35 to 40% mark, I was just like, I'm good. I'm not going to keep going. 
with this. I feel like it's really interesting world building. The writing itself, I think, is pretty good. And uh, it's a t it's very action packed. If you are looking for a fantasy story in a non basic bitch medieval fantasy world with good writing and a ton of plot development and like a cool world, I can totally see why people enjoy this. I think because I tend to be a more character driven speculative fiction reader, it just didn't work for me. And that really disappointed me because I know how much people love that book. And I think the second book also came out already and people were enjoying that. So I'm sad that that one didn't work for me. And then I'm going to say the one that actually of these probably worked for me the best, but was the most overhyped and therefore the most disappointing was From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And the reason why I'm putting this as the most overhyped is because it won the Romance Goodreads Choice Award last year. And it is just compared to the other things that were on that list, I am so shocked that it won. I, it's definitely, it is a romance, but it's not a particularly well done one. It's fine. I think I ended up giving it a two and a half or a three star. Like it's, it's okay. It's like a B, I guess a two and a half. It's like a B minus kind of book. It's fine. And I think if it had just been like sort of a one off -y, like, oh yeah, like I read this and kind of in one ear, out the other, whatever, I wouldn't be as mad about it. But like the fact that it got so much hype to me, what it gave versus what it was supposed to give to me did not like align totally. I'm gonna say it's definitely the most overhyped for sure. I'm not gonna continue in that series. Okay, next, uh, what is a series that you finally DNF'd this year? And I only really had one that came to mind and that is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. I really liked this first entry because it was a very soapy fantasy romance for new adult, I would say. And I just thought it was fun. Like I had a really good time in this one and it set up a lot of really possibly interesting places the subsequent book could go. And that book went none of those places. It was a really disappointing sequel. I think originally it was meant to be a duology and I got dragged out into a trilogy and it killed my interest in finishing the trilogy definitively with that second book. Next we have what is your favorite series finale of the year? And I actually didn't finish. Well, did I finish that many series? I guess I I don't know. I felt like I didn't have a ton to pick from this year, but I did have two that came to mind that I really did enjoy. One is Deathless Divide by Justina Ireland. This is the second in a YA fantasy Western duology. First one was called Dread Nation. And I do think Dread Nation was better than Deathless Divide. They're actually quite different books in their tone and pacing and just like vibe. Uh, but I thought that this was a really strong conclusion and took the themes and story that were set up in that first book into some directions I wasn't expecting, but in a way that I was very pleasantly surprised by. And then the other finale to a kind of micro trilogy within a bigger series, I guess, was I think it was called Say Goodbye. It's whatever the, the finale in the Sacramento trilogy is from Karen Rose. I really like this book. I think that it is much more of a romance well, I should say I, what I liked most about it was the romance rather than the suspense elements in it, because it's sort of like a cult serial killer type th suspense thriller book. And I did like that, but I really enjoyed the romance in this particular entry because it was a childhood friends to lovers and it was very angsty in a way that worked for me because angst is not always my favorite in a romance, but in this case, it really worked for me. Next is what is the best cliffhanger in a series you got this year? And I'm going to go with Amar and the Knight Brothers. There is a couple of revelations at the end of this book that I think were really delicious. And uh, I'm really excited to read the sequel that comes out in February. And I am excited to see how the development that comes in the last chapter or two in this book, how that pays off. I think it's going to be really, I hope, well, let's put it this way. I really hope it's going to be very interesting because it's definitely set up to be very interesting. Then we've got, what was your favorite spinoff series that you read this year? And I'm definitely going to say The Heroes of Olympus by Rick Riordan. This is the spinoff from the original Percy Jackson series. It does include Percy and Annabeth and some of the characters we get in the original Percy Jackson series. It's definitely got like a new cast. It's definitely a spinoff. And so far, I'm in, right now I'm currently in the middle of the Mark of Athena, which is the middle of the five books. And uh, I'm really enjoying it. I think it's super solid, a very satisfying spinoff and takes the overall world and series, I think, in interesting new directions. Okay, and then next is what is your most anticipated 
next book in a series that you read this year that will come out next year. So basically, you're reading in a series this year, there's a new entry coming out next year in that series, and you're really excited about it. For me, I decided to go with The Final Gambit, which is going to be the finale of the trilogy that starts with the Inheritance Games. Hawthorne Legacy came out this year, but I'm actually, I decided I'm going to save that book for next year so that I can read Hawthorne Legacy and Final Gambit back to back, and I'm very excited about that. So therefore, I'm excited for Final Gambit to come out so that I can read the Hawthorne Legacy and just finish off the trilogy. Then we've got what is your most anticipated series to catch up with next year based on what you read in the series this year. For me, it's definitely going to be The Heroes of Olympus, which I already talked about. I'm in the exact middle of it right now, and I'm excited to finish it in 2022. And then I'm also going to say The Bridal Quartet from Nora Roberts. I read the first one in that four book series, which is called Vision in White, and uh, I'm excited to read the next three. It is a small town romance series based around four friends who own and run a bridal business out of the old house that one of them inherited. So uh, I really enjoyed that first book and I liked the setup of the friends that we got for the next three books. So I'm excited. Hopefully, maybe I'll make that a Nora Roberts project next year because I'm trying to read all of her books right now. Um, so maybe I'll just commit to finishing that particular series next year. Okay, next, what is your favorite series that you finished this year? The true answer I think is gonna, I'm gonna have to say is Percy Jackson because this is well, this is the final book in that series. This has become an all-time favorite book. I really, really enjoyed this particular book, and I really enjoyed that series. It is a new all-time favorite series, so this is definitely the answer. I'm going to assume another one that I'm really going to enjoy the wrap-up to is the Fireblood series from Ruby Dixon, which interests... Well, actually, wait, let me... We'll, we'll pause, because this will be an answer to it, a, a future question as well. But that finale is coming out in the next couple of weeks as of filming, and based on where the series has been building to, I'm assuming that that finale is going to be something I really enjoy. So that's my runner up answer. But this is definitely the true answer is Percy Jackson. Next is what is your favorite episodic episodic series of the year? And I'm going to go back to this Dead Jen and Cairo Master of Jen series from Peter Jelly Clark. Episodic meaning that it, the overall story does build somewhere, but the individual books really can be read kind of as standalones because they're not the macro, the, the story of the series isn't serialized to the same degree that a more episodic series is. And I would say that that is true of this particular book. I think you could read any of the three that have been released and still enjoy them without having read the others. So I will go with this as my favorite episodic series of the year. Okay, and then a variant on the DNFing of a series question is, what is a series that you finally bailed on after holding out for it for a long time? And that is the Lord Peter Whimsey series. So this was one of my, this was my failed series reading project of the year. I remembered loving Gaudy Knight and Busman's Honeymoon from Dorothy L. Sayers. I'm actually not going to reread them because I frankly just want to preserve the happy memory I have of that in my mind. I was expecting that I had, I knew that I had read probably like 60 to 70% of these books back in my early 20s. And I remember for the most part liking them. Attempting to reread the series as like somebody in their early to mid 30s, this did not work for me mostly at all. The thing that I most enjoyed is this, the short story in the collection. And then I also enjoyed the nine tailors. I think that was what that one was called. There were a couple of, of high spots, but for the most part, did not enjoy this and did, and just decided not to read at all several of the books. And this is a series I'd been holding out on reading for more than a decade or to, of, like finishing off. So that was a huge, like the far and away the biggest disappointment in my reading this year, because that was something I'd really anticipated enjoying. I made it like a thing. I was inviting people to read it along with me and I ended up having to be like, sorry guys, like this isn't gonna work. Um, so that definitely was my biggest disappointment reading wise this year and definitely for series biggest disappointment. The next one is what is the series that you're most surprised you liked this year? I'm gonna go with two. One I've already mentioned which is the Fireblood series by Ruby Dixon because I mentioned in this tag last year that Fireblood was on the bubble for me to DNF. I was thinking about bailing on that series altogether, and I'm actually very glad I didn't. I read, I think, one more after that, and in that next entry that I read, the macro plot finally kicked in, and I was like, okay, I actually, I like where this is going. Actually, two of those books are on a different best of the year list, so I'm very glad that I stuck it out with that one. It was on the bubble for me to DNF 
enough, and I'm really glad that I didn't. And then the other one that surprised me was Year One by Nora Roberts, not because I loved it, but because I have not enjoyed Paranoras up until this point. And so I was actually very excited that I did end up liking that book pretty well. So that was a success. <laughs> okay, next we have uh, what is far and away my most shameful question on this list. And that is, what is the series that you meant to catch up with or finish this year that you did not? Well, I mean, I could put the Heroes of Olympus in there, but really there's two answers. And one of them is recurring on this list for the third time. This is the third year in a row I have intended, but failed to finish the Heartstone trilogy by L. Catherine <laughs> Okay, I still have the intention to read it next year. We'll see what happens. Okay, moving swiftly onwards, also the side series from Neil Schusterman. Also looks like Marple has been at it. Love you, sweetie, good job. I meant to finish this trilogy this year and didn't. Moving swiftly onward. The final question is, what is a series that you finished this year that you think is greater than the sum of its parts? And I am gonna go with two. So first I am going to say the Magnus Chase series from Rick Riordan. I really like the overall arc of this. I think the individual books sometimes can run a little bit long um, and actually <laughs> had some strong dissenting opinions about this series on a book club I did for the Blades and Bodice Ripper book club in November. So I'll try to remember to link that somewhere. But I really do like this first book in particular and I liked each of the books in the series. I really like though where the series as a whole goes and uh, I think it's definitely greater than the sum of its parts. Similarly to the Sacramento series from Karen Rose that we were talking about earlier. I really like each of the individual books in this trilogy, but as a whole, I think they make a very compelling story of this cult that is in the Northern California area, um, as well as basically like serial killer type stories. So I think that this trilogy definitely is greater than the sum of its parts. And with that, that is my best and worst series of the year tag that I do every year. This is the 2021 edition. So I have all the questions linked below and I tag anybody who would like to do this. I really enjoy checking in on series this way every year. So I find it helpful. I hope that you guys enjoyed this as well. Let me know how your series reading went this year. Did you have big hits, big disappointments, over hypeness, under hypeness, etc. Let me know that in the comments below. And thank you once again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Remember, you can use the code JOLLY to get your first book for only $5. Check out the link in the description to hop on it. And yeah, I think that that will do it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!